The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Many Christians are not going to heaven. Those who call themselves Christian, many who believe they are sheep, are not going to be saved. They are not going to have the red touch of God's mark. They're not going to be tapped. Only a remnant, the Bible says, only a remnant. If every generation, only a remnant has come through. And this is very important to understand. And the Lord now says, I'm going to gather my people. Now remember, there's a final judgment day when we all stand before God. But he said before then, judgment will begin in the house of God. There's a judgment that begins before the final judgment, and that judgment is already underway, beginning in the house of God, and among the ministry, and then all over the body of Jesus Christ. And that is happening now. He said he's going to gather his sheep into a valley of decision. Now, folks, many have believed that the valley of decision is whether or not you or I am going to decide to follow Jesus. That's not what the valley of decision is about at all. The valley of decision is the decision he's going to make, who is going to be tapped, who passing under the rod is going to get the mark. The valley of decision is his decision, it's not ours. It's those whose hearts are perfect toward him, those that he sees and he says, that's mine, tap, put the mark on, that is mine. That sheep belongs to me, that sheep is going to green pastures, and we'll talk about where it goes. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Joel 3, 14 and 16. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will grow dark, the stars will lose their brightness, and the Lord will roar out of, out of Zion. And that's exactly, he said he's coming, and Yahweh will judge. Yahweh is Jehovah. Now, why are all these being gathered right now to be judged? Look at Ezekiel 20. I want you to turn, uh, read verse 33, begin with verse 33 now. And here's the picture. Get this picture in your mind, please. As I live, saith the Lord God, surety with the mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. I will bring you out from the people, will gather you to the countries when you are scattered with the mighty hand, with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the hand of Egypt, land of Egypt, and so I will plead with you, saith the Lord, and I will there cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Look at me, please. God says in the last day, and this is Jeremiah saw, Isaiah saw, Ezekiel saw, all the prophets saw, a gathering of God's people before the final judgment, where the Lord would decide who were His, and some would be cast into a situation that will be described as we go on a little further here today. Now, of course, the day is coming. We all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. There's a great gathering. Every one of us must appear before God in Zion, according to Psalms 84, 7. But Christ is gathering his church right now in the wilderness of judgment. He's going to undertake a one-on-one, -on -one, face-to-face judgment. He said, I shall judge you face-to-face, -face, Ezekiel 20, 35, as I entered into judgment with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will enter into judgment with you, declares the Lord God. And I'm telling you that that judgment has already begun. For it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the outcome of those who do not obey the gospel? The judgment first in the house of God. The Lord arises to contend. And he arises to judge his own people. The Lord enters into judgment with his elders and the princes of the people. And the reason was because they have what I call the spirit of Herod who heard John the Baptist gladly, but obeyed nothing he said. And the Lord says there are going to be many in the last days who come and love to hear the prophets. They love to hear the watchman warn. They love to hear the sound of powerful preaching. They love it in their hearts, but they go out and disobey, and it never changes their lives. God is now contending with his household because nothing seems to move many of his children anymore. The trumpets are sounding of the prophets. The watchmen are crying out their warnings. The end of all things is at hand. And yet the majority of God's people are still at ease. They're not hearing the word of God. And God says, I've had enough and I'm going to bring my people into judgment. I'm going to bring them and I'm going to search their hearts. And he's now contending with his household. Why don't you go left to Ezekiel 7, verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, an end... The end has come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, 
And I will send mine anger upon thee and will judge thee according to thy ways. And will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And my eyes shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee and thy abominations shall be in the midst of thee. You shall know that I am the Lord God. Look at verse 14. Speaking of the watchmen and the prophets, they have blown the trumpet even to make all ready, but none goeth to the battle. For my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. Folks, look around you. What do you hear? What are you hearing in your spirit? As one who says, I'm a child of God. What are you hearing? Are you hearing the trumpets? Are you hearing what the prophets are saying? Are you seeing what's happening to the nation and the world? Wars and rumors of wars all over. Yugoslavia is gone. Russia is torn apart. Ethnic wars all over the face of the earth. Are you hearing the sound of the trumpet? The watchman is warned. I've stood in this pulpit now for seven years as a watchman. I've heard people say there's no prophetic message from this pulpit. There's been an everlasting prophetic message from this pulpit. There's a prophetic message going out to your heart this very moment. You've been listening to the watchmen. The watchmen are warning. They're sending letters. They're sending messages. They're on radio. They're everywhere. Warning that the end has come. Judgment is at the door. Our nation is collapsing right under our noses. Why are people sitting in front of their television sets laughing? Why are people no more awake? Why are people still lazy and not seeking the grace of God? Do you hear the sound of the trumpet? I hear it in my heart. I've heard it and I'll never stop hearing it. God help us when we quit hearing the sound of the trumpet. He said, the trumpets are blaring, but people are not going out to the battle. Why aren't Christians forsaking their idols? I want you to go to Ezekiel 8. You said you love the word, beloved. Verse 17. Then he said unto me, hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence. They've returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore also I will deal in fury. My eyes shall not spare, neither will I pity. Though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear? Look at me, folks. Here's what the prophet is saying. He said, the warnings have gone forth. God has proclaimed that he's coming soon. He's proclaimed the warning. The watchmen have warned. But the people who are holding on to their sins were, were putting a twig to their nose. And in, in those days in this society, the worst thing that you could do to show disrespect was to pick up a twig, hold it under your nose, and flip it. Now, we don't use the twig. We use the thumb. What God's saying, my people are thumbing their nose at me. They're thumbing their nose at my word and my warnings. They're not listening. They're putting the twig to their nose. For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And Lord, they put the brands to their nose. Now, none of us believe that we're like that. None of us believe. But folks, when you hear the word and don't obey the word and just let it slots off and go your own way, it's putting a thumb to your nose at God. That's what the scripture says. You're thumbing your nose at me. The Lord says, come out from among them, be you separate and clean. Touch not the unclean thing, and have no fellowship with the works of darkness. Shun the very appearance of evil. Love not the world nor the things that are in the world. And yet we still have Christians who know that and sit under Holy Ghost preaching and can sit in the presence of an awesome God. And the Lord Jesus can be manifesting His presence. And they walk right out, and they're not married, and yet they're going to bed with their sweethearts. There are Christians that come to this church and go to some of the dirtiest, filthiest movies in this city. I don't know how you can say that you are not thumbing your nose at God when you can sit and watch any kind of a movie where God's name is taken in vain, where the name of Jesus Christ is mocked and ridiculed, and you sit there and you take it. You don't walk out of that movie. You're thumbing your nose at him, he said. You're thumbing your nose at him. Porno, lust, gossip, slander, singing about light while still walking in darkness. God said, I'll deal with you in anger, not sparing, no pity. I'll put an end to this abomination. And the prophet Ezekiel had a vision of that marking of sheep in the spiritual realm. I want you to go to Ezekiel 9 now. And I want to show you another marking that's awesome. Ezekiel 9. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man with a, a slaughter weapon in his hand. Now look at this, folks. There's six angels there and they have slaughtering weapons in their hands but one man among them was clothed with linen with a writer's inkhorn by his side and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar and the glory of the lord god of israel was gone up from the cherub whereupon he was to the threshing hold of the house and he called to the man clothed with linen which had the writer's inkhorn by his side the lord said unto him go through the midst of the city to the midst of jerusalem 
set a mark upon the foreheads of who? Of the men that sigh and that cry over all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in my hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men which were before the house. Folks, look at me, please. That never happened literally, will never happen literally ever. This is a spiritual picture. The prophet Ezekiel is seeing down the quarters of time to our very day. And there are six men, six angels are going forth because God is judging his people now. He's marking those who belong to him. He said, I want you to go through the city. The city is the city of God. That's us, the new Jerusalem, those who claim to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. And the Lord is saying, go through this people. Go among them and find those whose hearts are sighing and crying over the sins in this house, the sins of the world, the sins of God's people, the sins of their own heart. Go put a mark on their forehead because they are mine. And so the angel of the Lord goes through the whole place and he puts a mark on the foreheads of those that belong to him who sigh and cry the abominations. First of all, the abomination of their own hearts. Folks, I have never been able to preach against sin in this pulpit until I've examined my heart before God. And there has to be in every one of us the examining of our hearts. There has to be an openness to the Lord. Because, beloved, He's coming to mark those who sigh and cry. First over their own abominations, and then over the abominations in the church, and in the abominations in the land, and in the world itself. Do you sigh and cry over those abominations? You're sighing and crying over your own. But then he says, those who are not marked have no pity, don't spare, and put the slaughtering mark upon them. Now, folks, what that means spiritually is a slaughtered life. It means a life of despair, despondency, depression, a terrible slaughtering, a slumbering, blind sheep passing under the rod one by one. Now, folks, I want you to get this picture. Ezekiel sees it. Jeremiah saw it. And I'm seeing it, and I want you to see this picture. We're gathered in this one great sheepfold, and there's one door, and the Holy Ghost stands there. Jesus is watching the sheep go by, and the sheep are going under the rod because the rod is just stretched out. It falls and taps certain ones, and here come the sheep passing by, and the shepherd, which could be pastor, is saying, no, 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 that mark that one. What a wonderful person, and the Lord says, no. He prophesied, he cast out demons, he did mighty works, I don't even know him, Pastor. Yeah, but Lord, she prophesied, she spoke in tongues. She looked so holy, she's full of bitterness. Here they come, one after another, they go by. And every once in a while, now comes the rod and the red paint on the sheep. They're passing by. The Lord said, no, the Holy Spirit says, no, don't mark that one. Slander, yes, it never will change. But Lord, he's a preacher. He preaches with such fire. The strong man was never bound. He gave his sins, but he didn't bind the strong man moving. So many go by, Ezekiel cries, Lord, too many righteous, too many are going by. Are you going to damn them all? Go to Ezekiel 20, verse 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I'll bring you into the bond of the covenant, and I will purge out from among you the rebels, and then the transgress against me. I'll bring them forth out of the country, where they sojourn and they shall not enter the land of Israel, you shall know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus said the Lord God, go you, serve every one to his idols. Because you see, those sheep that are not being marked, he says, send them out. Let them go to their idols. They won't change. Let them alone. Jeremiah, all your preaching, Ezekiel, all your preaching can't affect them anymore. Let them go. Let them go to the let them go out to the mountains and to the rocks. Let them go out to their shattered lives, but they're not mine. Go you serve everyone his idols, and hereafter also. If ye will hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. I want you to go to Ezekiel 9, verse 8. Let's start with verse 6. Slay utter old and young, both maids and little children women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Verse 8. It came to pass, while well, they were slaying them, and I was left. I fell upon my face and cried and said, O oh Lord God, will thou destroy all the residue of Israel in the pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? 
Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. It is full of blood in the city of perverses. And they said, The Lord that forsaken the earth and the Lord seeth not. Ezekiel's crying out, Oh God, so few are being marked. So few, so few are being marked. Are you going to slay them all? The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is very great and it's filled with blood. And the Lord commanded the marking angel to begin in the sanctuary. God showed Malachi that the ministry first would be melted and purified and he will sit as a smelter and a purifier of silver and he will purify the sons of Levi, refine them like gold and silver so that they may be presented to the Lord an offering in righteousness. And folks, that purifying process is happening in all of us right now whether we want to acknowledge it or not. I want you to go to Jeremiah 6 because some people who are going to be purified and put in the fire are going to hold on to their iniquity and the Lord is going to reject them even though they go through the fire. Jeremiah 6. And folks, I want you to get this picture clear in your mind if you will please. Beginning verse 27, Jeremiah 6. I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people that thou mayest know and to try them. The Lord said, I'm going to test my people. They're all grievous revolvers walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are corruptors. The bellows are burned. The Lord said, I'm going to turn up the fire. I'm going to heat it with my bellows. The lead is consumed. He's putting us into the fire. And the founder melteth it in vain. For the wicked are not plucked out. In other words, the wickedness of the heart is not surrendered. Reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord hath rejected them. Now, folks, that's a picture of many people going to be tested and going into the fire. And they're not going to let go of their of their sins. They're not going to let go. And the Lord says they're going to be rejected because they can't be refined anymore. They are rejected silver, according to the scripture. Look at Jeremiah. If you go to Jeremiah 8, verse 5 and 6. Why then is this people of Jerusalem backslidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast to seat, they refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rushes to the battle. The Lord says, There will be a people in the last days who don't acknowledge any sin whatsoever, say, What have I done? God help me. God help all of us to acknowledge our sins before the Lord before we pass under the rod. And folks, the Bible talks about a dread release that they're going to be some. I know people don't like to hear this, but you know, he said, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of God. And that there's going to be a blindness. There's going to be a deception fall upon many, many Christians. God help us. I've got to, to, to get this through to your spirit somehow. I want you to go to Ezekiel 20 again. Back to Ezekiel 20. Look at verse 38 again. I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. Now, folks, that's often rebellion on our own hearts. It's a spiritual condition that many of us are going through. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter the land of Israel. You shall know that I'm the Lord. The Lord says they're not going to go into fullness whatsoever. And God talks about giving them over to a dread release, to a shattered life. Remember what the scripture says in Romans, that there were a people who knew God but didn't acknowledge him as God, and they had a form of godliness without the power. And he says, God gave them over to reprobate minds. Men who once knew God, but they were filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, gossip. Without understanding, unloving, unmerciful, insolent, arrogant, boasters, disobedient, and vendors of evil. Folks, that's the shattered life that people are given over to when they pass out of this sheepfold into this shattered way of living. But realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossipers, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness without power. Gave a whole land to see in church over to a dread release. He said, because you're neither hot or cold, I'll spew you out of my mouth. God just gave them over. He gave a whole church over to a dread release. He said, no, you say you don't have need. You don't see your need. He said, I turn you over. He spit them out of his mouth. And I say, there are millions of sin-bound Christians are going to go to hell, including men who claim, many who claim to be spirit-filled because their lives mock holiness. There's no brokenness. But folks, I want to tell you that God's going to have a remnant in the last days. He's going to have a holy remnant. And when they pass through, the Lord, the Holy Spirit says, mark it. Mark him. Mark her. 
and down comes the rod. Marks. And these who are marked go with the shepherd into green pastures. They're, they're held here on the side to all are marked. And they're led off to green pastures because the word rod here in Hebrew is Sheba, the same word used in the rod of Psalm 23. That rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Because those whose hearts are right with God, who sigh and cry with their abominations, who acknowledge their sins, are walking in righteousness before the Lord. The Lord knows them and He's going to mark them. And they're going to follow that rod. They don't fear that rod. That rod's a comfort to them because it marked them. And that rod is going to lead them into green pastures beside still waters. It's the same word, that same rod. Folks, if you're walking in righteousness, you need not fear judgment. You need not sit here and fear my preaching. You need not hear, fear any man's preaching. If your heart is right with God, if your ear is clean, your heart is clean, there's no poison in your system, you never, never fear. You should rejoice in what I'm preaching right now because your heart is right with God and you know when you pass under the rod. That blood, red, that red is the blood of Jesus Christ. And there are many who've claimed the blood of Jesus Christ. They've given up sex, they've given up lust, they've given up habits, but they've never bound the strong man, Satan himself. He has to be bound and then he will spoil his goods. Have you had Satan bound in your spirit? Have you had him bound in your heart? Oh, hallelujah. Verse 40, chapter 20 of Ezekiel. For in my holy mountain, in the mountains of the height of Israel, saith the Lord, there shall the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. I will accept them, and, that I, and there will I require your offerings and first fruits. I will accept you with your sweet savor, and I will bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries where you've been scattered. Sanctify you before the heathen. God says, I'm going to have a holy remnant that are going to be my testimony before the heathen in the last days. They're going to be marked. And you know where they're going to follow him? Song of Solomon, my beloved has gone down to his garden, to the beds of balsam, to pasture his flocks in the gardens. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. He who pastors his flock is among the lilies. Hallelujah. I wonder how many in this house, I wonder how many of you are going to be led. You're going to be passing under the rod and you're going to be marked because the Lord says, he, she, is no other desire but me. There's one who's not looking to people. There's one who's not looking to anyone but me. There's one who's totally dependent and cast upon me. With clean hands and pure heart, spirit, mind and body. This is mine. This is the holy remnant that's going to rise in the last days. Sighing and crying over the abominations. And the Lord's going to use that holy remnant to be his example in the last day, to be his testimony. Folks, I don't know about you, but I, I don't have time for any of the foolishness anymore because I want his mark on my forehead. I want to be marked by that precious lamb. I want the Holy Spirit to bring that rod down on my back. I want that mark on my neck. Ezekiel 20, 43. And here's the real testimony, folks, whether you can tell whether or not you've received the mark. And these shall, uh, verse 42 first, ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into land, in the country which I lifted up my hand to give to your fathers. There shall ye remember your ways and all your doings wherein you have defiled. You shall loathe yourself in your own sight for all your evils that you've committed. Folks, that's repentance. That's total repentance. You look at your life and so God point out anything that doesn't like you and loathe it. You make all your wrongs right. And you don't walk among the people as if you're some holy, righteous person. You go among the people in your own weakness because that's when his strength is made perfect. And you loathe yourself. You loathe your sins. And you live in that loathing. Oh, God, by your grace alone, you saved me. By your grace alone. I'm no better than anybody else. I'm no better than the worst sinner in this city except by the blood of the Lamb. And because my heart has been made to reach out to you, oh, God. Beloved, we're passing under the rod. You know what shook me up? I was reading Paul, what Paul said to the church. He said that I may present you as a chaste virgin. Now, for, he didn't say as a virgin. There are a lot of virgins. Remember, there were ten virgins and five were lost. It's not enough to be a virgin. In other words, you say, I belong to Jesus. Because you can be a virgin and still lust. You may not have committed the act, but you lust in your mind. But you see... He didn't say, I want to present you as a virgin. I'm not interested in presenting you as a virgin to Christ alone. He said, a chaste virgin, absolutely pure in mind and body and spirit. And I may present you a chaste virgin. Folks, this is not a popularity contest. 
That's nothing to do with personalities. God called me to New York City for one purpose, and he empowered me to do it, and that's to raise up a chaste bride, holy and pure and sanctified. I'm not here to get you to love me, or I'd love to be loved. I'm not here to, in a popular contest, to get anybody to love me. I have to stand before a holy God. I have to have my own hands clean and pure. I'll stand against slander. I'll stand against anything. But I will not let anything hinder me from my call to present you as a chaste virgin before a holy God. You have to stand before Christ. I'll suffer anything. I'll go through anything. But I'm going to stand before you on the judgment. I have to be there as a shepherd. And if this is your church and you belong here, I'm a shepherd. And I have to be called before God and I'm going to be there when you pass under that rod. And many of you would like to see touched. I'd say, God, no, please don't let that go. Don't let her go. Don't let him go. Please, Lord, that's my friend. That's my loved one. That's, don't let it happen. And I can't stop it. I can only go up to the point where you pass. And you and I are going to pass under a rod. Say what you will about me. I will stand here between you and hell. Between you and the devil. And I'm not going to let you go without a fight. And you're going to know when you stand before God. There were shepherds in this pulpit who fought every demon in hell for you. Who fought against all the principalities and powers. And gave you the truth. And prophesied to you. And gave you the holy word of God. And stood before you and hell itself and said stop. Because I don't want you to pass under that rod and go screaming out into a wilderness of despair. The sad thing is some of you will never change, no matter what I preach. No matter who preaches, you won't change because you've already committed. And he said, those who loathe their sins and hate them. David said, yes, for God, they're under the blood. He forgets, but I don't. David said, my sin is ever before me. I can't forget anything I've done against him. And I loathe my past. I loathe everything I did against him. And that keeps me broken before him. Do I make mistakes? You bet I do. One thing I know, God sent me here. God set up this house as a testimony to the whole world that in the last days, there will be a godly, pure, and holy people who live in Babylon, who live in one of the worst cities in the world and are, have clean hands and a pure heart. Hallelujah. And walk in repentance. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Also in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.